Welcome back to the dyeing studio. I'm in here for a special reason today. It does include dyeing yarn, but it has nothing to do with dyeing yarn for a particular shop update because my yarn order is a little delayed, so I'm out here uh, playing around. I wanted to experiment with something, and so this is gonna be just a vlog uh, where I experiment with a particular form of dyeing yarn that I've never tried before. And um, I'm not sure if anybody's done this before. I haven't like scoured the internet to see if this is something that's already been done, but uh, I was curious to give it a shot. So. I think the temperature outside right now, my husband has this really cool temperature gun. It's um, just, you can get it on Amazon because we were concerned that our thermostat in our house wasn't working properly. And so we decided to just grab one of these and check various different parts of the house. Um, but I can hold it and point it towards a source, you know, a heat source or something, and it can tell me the temperature outside. It's about 103, 104 degrees outside right now. It's noon. I wanted to see if it would get, and, and actually what gave me this idea was the other day I made sun tea. If you watched uh, the previous episode of the vlog, I made some sun tea, um, which is tea that you brew in the heat, and in the sunshine and in the heat of the day. And it kind of made me think, could I dye yarn using just the heat? Um, from the sun um, plus just the heat outside in general so I just wanted to see if I could dye um, at least one skein of yarn using that as a heat source and so that's what I'm going to do today we're going to kind of test it out and see if it's something that can be done um, without using any other heat source than nature can I dye yarn and fully exhaust the dye um, without using electricity or gas powered uh, heat can I do it with just the heat of the sun and like the ambient heat um, outside in the sunshine? I think I'm gonna be able to um, exhaust most of the dye, but I have this feeling that it's not gonna be able to completely exhaust the dye. But I really think that that depends on how long I'm leaving this out in the sun. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So we're gonna test this out today. We're gonna to see if I'm able to use, and I'm, the things that I'm gonna be using are a stainless steel pot. So here is my, my pot, stainless steel pot with water. And I'm gonna be using a glass lid so that it almost serves, that it creates like a greenhouse effect inside the pot, um, contributing to the heat inside the pot. Now I do have steam table pans and the steam table pans have stainless steel uh, lids that go on top. And so I also thought that, that would work as a really great way to um, create the heat needed to exhaust dye. And that would be my next step in this process. But the first thing I wanna try is just using a pot. And so I'm going to, I was thinking that I would start by heating the dye stock first and then adding the yarn to the hot water and then finishing the process. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the dye stock to the water and then I'm gonna add the yarn and then I'm gonna put the whole thing out in the sun instead of putting the water out in the sun first and then adding the yarn later. Um, because I wanna see if I'm able to get nice um, even coverage on the yarn when the yarn is already in the pan. I think that's what I wanna do. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add, well, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make it a gradual, heating process. So we're going to do that. So we're going to start with this pan. It has water in it. I'm going to add dye stock. This is the dye stock I'm using. If you watched um, the first episode of the Tips from the Dyeing Studio, I did a really brief uh, tutorial on how to mix dye stock. This is the dye stock that I mix in that tutorial. And since um, I need a reason to use it, I'm going to use it for this. So we're going to start with this dye stock. It's a gold dye stock and um, one skein of yarn. And actually the skein of yarn that I'm using, which is soaking right now, um, is really for uh, mini skeins that I've combined together. That's essentially one skein of yarn. So I'm gonna get four minis out of this. And, and once I'm all finished with everything, um, I will be putting those minis in the shop over at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com so you can purchase the solar dyed minis when this is all over. Um, so definitely if you're watching this, head over and check out fiberforthepeopleyarn.com as soon as you get done watching this because chances are they will be in the shop and you can snag them. There's only gonna be four, so 
if you're if you like it if you like the way it looks um, you can try it and you can know that they were completely dyed using solar energy as far as I can tell you if it doesn't work and I can't get it to fully exhaust I might have to throw it on a burner and finish it off that way but I'm, I'm actually pretty confident the more I think about this I'm pretty confident this is gonna work the citric acid of course so I have um, my citric acid here I think I'm going to double the typical dose of citric acid that I use to give it every fighting chance to, to fully exhaust so typically for one skein of yarn I would use one scoop of citric acid um, plus some Globers salt as well or Globers or however you pronounce that um, but this time I'm gonna use three scoops of citric acid only um, in the water and see if that helps to exhaust it even further. I don't want to use too much citric acid only because then that's doing most of the work and I really want to see if the heat and the sun can do most of the work um, in this particular experiment. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to see how hot a pan would get if I left it in the sun uh, for a period of time. And so I have a pan right here uh, that I brought out. It hasn't been out here for very long, but I want to go ahead and just see how hot it is at this point. I would say it's probably been out in the sun right now for about 20 minutes. Okay, so I want to find the most, the optimal place to put my pan. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking this temperature gun, um, an IM or infrared thermometer, if we're being uh, scientific here, and I'm trying to find the area of concrete that is the hottest out here. And it probably didn't, ha I don't have to take it to this level, I'm sure, but you know, the scientific person this the scientist in me is taking it to that level so I'm just taking the, the infrared thermometer and shooting it at the concrete trying to find the place that is the hottest and also I'm trying to find the place that I know is in the Sun almost all day um, and doesn't get any shade so that's what I'm doing right now Okay, so that's crazy. The hood of the car is 150 degrees, 149 degrees. Wow. Okay, so you can see that there was one patch of concrete that was 122 degrees. I actually found another one that was 129 degrees, but it was on a, a tilt, like a, a hill, an incli incline. That's what I'm trying to come up with. And so I don't want to put the pan on an incline. So I need as flat a space as I can find. And now that I'm looking outside, I want to try one more. I want to see how hot the asphalt gets. That'd be crazy to dye yarn on the asphalt right off of our sidewalk, probably. But I, I'm curious to know how hot it gets. Okay, it gets a hundred, it's really hot. I think it's like 148 degrees on the asphalt, but I can't dye yarn on the asphalt. I can't put a pot of yarn on the asphalt off the sidewalk. That's crazy. Yes, there is a part of me that is tempted to do that because it is optimal, um, but that's crazy. I'm not gonna do that. But I did find a part of our side yard. There's a, a concrete walkway and the concrete over there is 138 degrees. So we're gonna use that for the heat source that's gonna act as like the convection heat source. And then we're gonna have um, the sun also working through the glass of the lid as another um, solar heat source. So let's go ahead, let's get the yarn in the pot, let's get the dye stock in the pot, let's get the citric acid first, the dye stock, and then we're gonna put the yarn in the pot and we're gonna see how this works. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, I'm spinning the yarn to dry, uh, not dry, but I'm spinning it to get a lot of the excess moisture out of it right now, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the pot, put the lid on it, put it out in the sun. Now, the color of the dye stock that you can see here is pretty uh, pretty mild. It's a pretty uh, light dye stock, and that's because I wanted to see if I could do it, but I didn't wanna like go over the board and put a really heavy dye stock in here, because then I feel like that's only increasing my chances of having a lot of leftover when I'm done. And like I said, I wanna give this yarn every fighting chance to, uh, to become dyed fully and so for right now with this initial experiment we're just sticking to a nice pastel um, colorway so it's gonna be a really pretty light uh, a pale like gold color dye yarn and you're adding the yarn um, you're immersing it uh, for a full dye you definitely want to get a lot of that excess moisture out so that the dye can um, absorb into the yarn a lot more readily and if it's super wet it won't do that so that's what I'm doing right now and then I'm gonna add it to the pot Okay, 
so it's set down, it's in the sun. I took a temperature, it was about um, 103 degrees on the lid, which uh, it's pretty hot for considering I just set it out there. Um, but we'll see, because I, I think I might need to actually take the lid off and check the temperature of the water, because I'm not sure if maybe the glass reflects the heat off. I'm not, you know, I don't know. So I'm gonna take my first uh, temperature check, my official temperature check in 15 minutes. I'm gonna set a timer, 15 minutes, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lift the lid off and take an actual uh, temperature reading of the water and the yarn inside to see what we're working out, what the temperature is. I'll put the lid back on, wait another 15 minutes, and we'll see. And every time that I do that, I'll see how much dye we have left by using my little measuring cup so I can pull it out and see how um, uh, saturated the dye stock is at that point. I know what some of you might be thinking, and I'm thinking it too, um, the dye stock to begin with was really light. There wasn't a ton of dye in there. Um, and that's number one, that's because the color itself is light. Um, and also number two, just because I'm purposely using that dye stock because it's lighter dye stock, because I don't want it to be super heavily saturated and have this be something I have to like, that I just know is probably not gonna work. I just wanna see if dye can be absorbed into um, yarn using solely the heat from the sun and the ambient heat outside. And so that's the purpose of this. But to add a little element to the challenge, I think what I'm gonna do next, after this whole experiment is over, um, if it's successful, if we manage to get it to work, I think I'm gonna take it up one notch and see if I can't um, speckle the yarn lightly and set the speckles into the yarn using my steam table pans and just the heat of the sun. And if I do end up doing that, that'll be a part two to this uh, series. So um, we'll see. So right now we're just trying to see if I can fully exhaust that dye into the yarn. I'm using, like I said, solar power. So let's see how it goes. We'll check back in 15 minutes. All right, it's time to go check out and see the status of our yarn. I've got my infrared thermometer, and let's go check it out. I'm a little afraid it might be in the shade now, partial shade. I walked out here earlier and realized that uh, some of this may end up in some palm tree shade. So here we are. Okay, so yep, we're in a little bit of partial shade, so I'm gonna actually just move it. All right. Okay, I just moved it a little bit. Go ahead and see what our temperature is. So this is on top of the glass, 107 degrees. Not, oh, 106, 107, 105 as I move this around. It's not what we need it. If I'm doing testing the side of the pot, I'm getting 135 in this area right here. And I, know, I mean, the pot doesn't really feel that hot, to be honest. So I'm a little doubtful that this is gonna go. Let's see if we can get anything different by shooting it into the water. Yeah, we're looking at 102. I'm gonna feel it with my hand. Yep, not hot enough at this point. Now, I can see that the dye has absorbed into the yarn. I mean, we can see that the yarn is no longer white. Some dye is gonna absorb into the yarn regardless of the temperature of water just because of the citric acid. That's gonna cause it to, uh, to absorb into the yarn. What's left in here will require heat to finish exhausting. And it doesn't look th like there's a ton of dye left in the water, but there's enough left in here that we want to try and, and exhaust that. And so it's, you know, it's just really, it's not getting hot enough. And part of me thinks that maybe it has something to do with um, this pan. Perhaps this pan is not just, it's not suitable. This is not a suitable environment for heating this kind of pan. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes. If the temperature doesn't go up much, I'm gonna actually change pans. I'm gonna put it into a steam table pan instead of this pot and see if that has any impact on the heat. Um, because the steam table pans are a lot thinner, um, definitely, definitely not as heavy gauge of metal as this, so they might uh, get hotter faster. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how that would work. The part of me is a little disappointed because I feel like I just didn't challenge myself in the situation enough, uh, provide a challenging enough um, scenario because 
the dye was pretty faint to begin with, but that's okay. Hey, like we learned, we maybe I might do this again uh, in the future with something a little bit more saturated, but because we have this going on right now, we're gonna just see um, where we are with this. So I'm gonna dip in, I'm gonna get a little bit of water, and we're gonna see what it looks like. So there it is, that is the water. It's virtually, it's virtually clear. So I would say that considering the situation, it is very hot outside and it has been in a very hot environment that water got well over 100 degrees. Um, considering this situation, it worked. You can exhaust dye almost fully into yarn. I, I guess my question was, can I do it fully? Um, and I have another step I'm gonna do after this in a second. Um, but you can pretty much dye yarn with just the heat from outside and citric acid if you're working with a really pale pastel color. Um, what I'm gonna do to continue this experiment is I'm going to transfer that yarn into a steam table pan. We're going to um, try to steam set a small amount of speckles onto the yarn using just solar power. And I'm thinking that it's actually going to heat up faster and heat up more in the steam table pans than it was in that pot. And, and we'll see. So actually what I'm gonna do to kind of prepare for this ahead of time is I'm gonna take my steam table pan, fill it with a, sh a shallow amount of water um, from that pot over there because we're gonna continue to use that water just to continue to exhaust that dye. I'm gonna put it out in the sun without the yarn first to heat that water to really get it nice and hot because that water is already warm. I think it's gonna heat up even more um, inside this pan. Once it's to a point where I think it'll work, I'm gonna add that yarn to the pan. We're gonna add some, some speckles, just light speckling, put the lid on it, and it's gonna create a nice steamy environment uh, and hopefully set those speckles. So let's see what we can come up with. 